Located in the heart of Medellin stands the prestige Divine Word University, home to over 3,000 students around the country who leave the comfort of their homes and travel into Medellin in hopes to achieve quality, tertiary level education. It was the vision of few dedicated Catholic missionaries to provide education for Papua New Guineans in the early 60s. That vision now sees Divine Word University contribute to the human resource of Papua New Guinea and continues to strive in delivering quality education guided by Christian ethics. I, as Prime Minister, am able to announce today. The university was officially established in 1996 by the National Executive Council, but before that, it all began from a high school that was built on the swamp of an old plantation. A recently published book titled a History of Divine Word University by late Jane Sinclair documents that prior to the university's establishment, DWU was formerly known as Divine Word High School in 1967 and Divine Word Institute in 1979. President of Divine Word University Professor Father Philip Gibbs describes the shift from Divine Word High School to Divine Word Institute as the need for the institute to cater for students around the country and the focus of business studies and communication arts as the pioneer courses. The Divine Word missionaries have been here now 124 years and they could see that um, we needed educated people here in, in Papua New Guinea. They realized that Papua New Guinea would get independence and that you have to have educated people running the show. And so they tried to think what's really important and one thing was um, accountancy and business studies um, so that to try to avoid corruption mm -hmm. and the other thing was um, communication and journalism and, and, and those sorts of things so that the media would have educated people to take over the media and those were the two things that I thought were really important and so they started that uh, when they decided to form the uh, the one would institute, of course, in um, 1980, they, they started the, the Divine Word Institute, which later turned into the university. So basically when they started off the institute, they had just um, two programs here? They really started two programs. They were, they were moving from the high school. They, uh, they, well, they, they started the high school, and that was a regular high school. But it was different from other high schools because they took people from all over Papua New Guinea. And that's what got them into trouble, because the Madang uh, administration uh, said, no, you've got to take people just from Madang. And they said, no, we want to take people from all over Papua New Guinea. And so, all right, if you won't let us do that, we'll start an institute, so a tertiary institute. And that's why they started that, and they focused on um, accountancy and business studies and communications arts as things that were needed in the country at the time. Over the course of the university's transition from a high school to institute and university, it has seen notable development in infrastructure, technology and academics. Some of the notable development include the building of the new Friendship Library, the SVD Auditorium, new dormitories and lecture rooms. A few lone seven staff who have served Divine Word during the transition stages describe what DW was like in the past compared to today. In 1982, they had just turned that Fian and Brothers Hall from an open dormitory for everybody into cubicles, uh, as it is now. And that was an indication uh, that the open dormitory of the high school, where you can pack them in, in double stories, was now becoming um, tertiary place where gentlemen come and uh, work in their rooms. Not with computers of course, we didn't have computers those days. And there were 68 students in the first year and uh, there were eight staff members. So I saw that transition in terms of infrastructure development was really huge uh, for that period of time. But there were also other developments in terms of uh, the departments and the programs because when I was here the health program was introduced for the first time and then even the uh, business developed to include ICT or IS department, information systems department 
and then also the mathematics and computing departments. So, and the departments were here originally from the institute days, and they developed them eventually to faculties. Kasper Bas also known around the university as Papa Kasper, has served the university for 51 years. As one of the longest serving staff member, he has watched the university transition from a high school into the university. For a Philippine, the best, best president of Catholic High School this time. 1968, we'll start with this classroom close to long. Open all, eh? Best building and brother's hall, and best dormitory, and uh, second dormitory, and uh, piano. Eh? The second born beginning of Lumi, and last man long, working Catholic High School, he come long secondary, long year to soon, and be an amazing set long uh, institute, and come long university. Apart from infrastructure, technology has also been of major development for Divine Word. It was not until the early 2000s that former president of the university, Father Jan Zuba, began tabling talks to fully utilize ICT as the mode of learning in the university. This initiative became a success and encouraged blended learning and teaching for the university. Right from the beginning, we wanted the university to take full advantage of the ICT facilities, which was a very good uh, move because um, as, as a small university trying to grow in the developing world, um, we had problems accessing resources, materials for teaching and that. And the best way was to go online to be able to find the resources. So starting in 2002, I was one of the few people who had an internet connection in my office. There was only two internet connections, one in my office and one in the main admin building. And so all the staff had to either to go to the main admin building and I just had to go to my office to have an internet connection. And, but of course it was using modems and things at that day and it was slow. But uh, oh yeah, it has contributed a lot to how we have developed in terms of providing quality education to, in all the areas of the field that we are teaching in. I think with the use of technology in learning and uh, teaching and learning, it really brought them in the quality of our research that they are producing. It's like it's right now, like looking generally speaking, most of the companies and uh, organizations, they are advancing, they are also advancing in, in terms of when it comes to making uh, profit. We try to like uh, advance in using technologies and all this. Like imagine a student graduating from a university with uh, uh, uses just technological tools to in the learning process and all this. It's an advantage for our students. In 2010, Father Yan Zuba then introduced the DW paperless policy, which included facilitating learning online through a learning management system, Moodle. Till today, students are issued a laptop upon registration in their first year, and students are also allocated a daily internet quota of 800 megabytes. Uh, the whole world is going uh, digital, and all the other universities are at a certain disadvantage because uh, people are not ready for this. But we are. Divine Word is ready for this. So I think it was the right step to do, and the idea of a paperless university sounded exaggerated, sounded like a, a funny thing to do and to say, I remember, but I remember being persuaded and even giving a talk to the staff once about. I think we're very lucky that Father Jan Schuber made certain decisions about this and I think he was well advised by going to Australia and even though it wouldn't be the normal thing in Australia for all the students to be issued with a, a laptop, we might have even been ahead of a lot of Australian institutions in doing that, but uh, that would be because the Australians could afford their own uh, easily. I mean, could be presumed to afford their own, uh, which was not so easy to do in Papua New Guinea. The introduction of paperless policy has seen both positive and negative impacts on staff and students. Priscilla Waikaidi, a former student from Divine Red Institute, has returned this year to attain a degree in communication arts. 
She shares her experience of learning with paper and today with the paperless policy. When I was doing diploma here like 19, 20 years ago, we were basically being taught on the blackboard. So we were taking notes, everything was um, printed and given to us in handouts and on papers. And I remember how every year when we wanted to go home, we'd go home with cuttings of books or papers, um, our notes and, and stuff. So um, this year when I went home for the semester break, I basically just grabbed my computer and went all the way to Alopa and then came back. So I, I realized the convenience now of um, the paperless policy. But I also noticed that um, you didn't have the opportunity of just finding your notes and having a look through, especially when you're in an area where the network's not really good. Everything is accessed on computer and um, you need internet to be able to do that. So I think the focus is basically on campus for the paperless policy. Other than that, um, you have to have money to access it anywhere else, especially Moodle and your lessons. So um, that's one difference I got out of it. But I still appreciate um, having notes on uh, paper because... Looking into the future, it is clear that Divanwood University will keep the pace in developing infrastructure, technology and academics. Divanwood, in terms of infrastructure, will continue to develop because uh, it has a good, basically a good reputation and it's attracting support from donor agencies and they will also you know, want to support the university in its plans to expand. My wish and dream for the future that within the next five years we will get into the natural sciences. Now, I think the natural sciences make a complete university. Physics, chemistry, botany, biology, uh, any of those things you care to name. I suppose environmental science, but that's uh, an end result of all the others I would expect. Yeah. One of the things that will have to happen within the next five years will be a, a um, a growth in uh, quality. I think uh, we are really strong on that, that the, the quality of the output, the quality of the teaching, the quality of the research has to be better. And particularly, I think there'll have to be a lot more research done. Um, there'll be um, other areas there where the university will, will expand, but very much trying to respond to what's happening in the world. For now, it is sure that this great institution was built from humble beginnings and it will continue to achieve greater heights in the future.